This video brought to you by Gamefly. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon for a 30-day free trial. Stick around to the end for more details. Welcome back, Canonites, for an all-new Theorycraft. In the wake of Halo Fractures, lore fans have been practically tripping over themselves as we gobbled up the new lore and, perhaps more importantly, the implications for established lore and the story going forward. But no story has had quite as much of an impact as Promises to Keep, the Christy Golden story that serves as a follow-up to Greg Bear's Forerunner Saga. As I mentioned in my review, this story reveals a ton of new information related to the domain, how it's around in Halo 5, and much, much more. Well, today we're going to take a closer look at some of these revelations and how they could play into the next Halo game and the created storyline. Naturally, spoilers for Promises to Keep ahead, so steer clear if you don't want to have anything spoiled for you. Alright, let's dive in. In Promises to Keep, Born Stellar aka the Isodidact and a few other Forerunners travel to Maithrillion, the Forerunner capital, to, in essence, reboot the domain. Along the way, they are told by the First Counselor, former head of the Ecumene Council, that the Organon, a mythical device said to be able to activate and control all Precursor technology, was in fact stored in the core of the Capital World. Further, it was, in actuality, what allowed early Forerunners to access and understand the Domain. Once at the Capital, we learn that the Organon is actually a Precursor AI, or Ancilla to use the Forerunner term, named Abaddon. Over the centuries, the name was distorted into Organon. Over the course of the story, the Forerunners encounter Abaddon as it tries to bring these Forerunners to trial for the firing of the Halo Array. Long story short, many Forerunners are killed, but ultimately the builder-turned-lifeworker known as Growth Through Trial of Change is able to initiate the reboot process, an action that ultimately kills her. From there, the Forerunners return to the Ark to finish the reseeding and then leave the Milky Way. While the Forerunners would never know for sure if Trial Sacrifice was successful, we as fans know that the Domain would essentially be set on a reboot process. However, the Domain, as it was known to the Forerunners, would seem to be lost, and the Precursor technology that allowed it to be accessed from anywhere in the galaxy was destroyed. This is why it seems largely inaccessible until Cortana wiggles her way in and starts activating Forerunner-built Domain nodes across the galaxy. From there, we move on to the main event, the actual theory part of this video, the Organon's role in future games. From Promises, we know that the Organon is still around, even if Abaddon isn't the same entity it was before the reboot. Simply put, I think that the Organon could play a major role in the upcoming created story, if for no other reason than it would make for a brilliant method of taking on the created and their control of the domain. As it stands, a major worry for many people, myself included, is that with the created having unrestricted access to some serious Forerunner tech, by what means could what remains of the UNSC, even with Infinity on their side, hope to fight back? Well, without 343 seriously nerfing what Forerunner constructs are capable of. Seriously, even ancient humanity had trouble dealing with the Forerunners. The Organon, therefore, could provide a way of countering Cortana's newfound power, but the question is, how to get to it? As far as we know, it remains on Maithrillion, but no one knows where that is. Well, the profile of Ro Barutsumi on Halo Waypoint provides some interesting insight. As it turns out, Ro seemed to believe that the builder ship on Reach, the one we defend in the level of the package, could have led him to Maithrillion. Why remains a mystery, but there had to be some reason he thought this. If nothing else, why mention it at all if not to plant the seeds for the dedicated lore fans? Anyway, assuming that Roe was correct, that ship is still on reach and could lead the UNSC to Maithrillion. Of course, there is one problem to this. Cortana. As anyone who's played Halo Reach should know, a fragment of her spent weeks underneath Swordbase studying the information contained within that ship. I'd be very surprised if she hadn't stumbled upon the location for Maithrillion in that time. So, the question becomes, who will secure the ship first? This theory is a bit of a long shot, but it's a path I would love to see 343 explore. I can confidently say that many fans would love to return to Reach, and as noted, the secrets of Maithrillian could provide an excellent means of fighting Cortana. But what do you guys think? Good theory, baseless assumption, something else? Let me know in the comments below. And before we go, I need to make a couple thank yous. First to user Deguru on Reddit who beat me to the punch on this and actually somewhat inspired me to make this video, and to Horospis for his latest blog, which really breaks down Abaddon, the Organon, and the larger implications of promises to keep in ways that I plan to do, but have yet to. Thank you for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give a like and consider subscribing and sharing this video around.
Also consider checking out Gamefly. With over 8,000 new releases and classic games for current and previous gen consoles, and even some older consoles, Gamefly is a great way to try tons of games without buying them. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon to start your 30-day free trial.